Hello everyone, it's Andre from SWL. Welcome to episode 9 of my series, the SWL DXing News Report. In this podcast, I talk about radio-related news, frequency changes, news stations, closures, and anything else that might interest DXers. This program is presented as a video podcast, so you can sit back and listen or enjoy the visuals in the video if you want to look at images while you are listening. For those of you who would like to listen via your regular podcasting apps, there is now an RSS feed available for my podcast on Spotify. The RSS feed link is in the video description. This series does not necessarily go out weekly. It depends on the news. Some weeks are quieter, some are busier. In this episode, you will hear about Czech Radio ending its cooperation with the Slovak State Broadcaster. You will hear about the Droitwich Longwave Transmitter in the UK turning 100. Scandinavian Weekend Radio's planned broadcast dates for the next months. Radio Exterior de España being absent from some shortwave frequencies. Two new BBC frequencies. Some Radio New Zealand frequency changes. And there is a new noise that has appeared on the Republic of Yemen radio frequency. I also share a bit of history and another reception report from Liam in Colorado. The news website, the Slovak Spectator, reports that the Czech radio service has indefinitely suspended cooperation with the Slovak state broadcaster, Slovak Television and Radio, or STVR. In response to the announcement by Czech Radio, STVR said that Slovak Radio covers its foreign news from several sources, so it will continue to fully report about events. The steps taken by Czech Radio have to do with changes at the state broadcaster in Slovakia, which Czech Radio says might lead to political interference. The Slovak government has changed the structure of the state broadcaster, saying that the broadcaster, which was formerly known as RTVS, did not fulfill its mandate to inform the public in an objective way. In July, Slovakia's president, Peter Pellegrini, approved a controversial new law that saw RTVS being replaced with STVR, as the state broadcaster is now known. One of the changes was the introduction of an ethics committee that plays an advisory role at the broadcaster, which is probably what concerns Czech radio. The BBC longwave transmitter at Droitwich is 100 years old this month. It went on air on September the 6th, 1934, and was the largest of its time. BBC Radio 4 is still beamed out from Droitwich on 198 kilohertz longwave, but the BBC has made it clear that these transmissions will end sometime. Right now, it seems as if the end date might be the 30th of June 2025, but there is still much uncertainty about the final cut-off date. The Radio Exterior de España frequency to Africa appears to be down at the moment. REE transmits daily to Africa and the South Atlantic on 15390 kHz between 1500 and 2300 UTC. However, this frequency has been quiet for at least a week now here at my location in Johannesburg, South Africa. I have not been able to find a reason for this, but I assume it might have to do with maintenance to the transmitters. REE announced earlier this year that they would purchase a new transmitter to start replacing its other shortwave transmitters that now suffer from regular breakdowns. RE has said repeatedly that it is committed to shortwave, therefore I am sure the Africa signal will return at some point. The other REE frequencies are still active. 15520 kHz to the Middle East and the Indian Ocean, which goes out between 1500 and 2300 UTC also. I have heard this one several times this past week. And the signals to North and South America are active between 1800 and 0200 UTC daily. These are 17715 kHz to South America and 17855 kHz to North America. I also hear the South American signal quite frequently here in South Africa. Scandinavian Weekend Radio from Finland 
has announced its broadcasting times for September, October, and November. The September broadcast already went out. It was on Saturday, the 7th of September from 2100. The next broadcasts will be on the 5th of October and on the 2nd of November. The transmission times and frequencies are 2100 to 1800 UTC the next day on 6170 kilohertz, 11690 kilohertz, 1602 kilohertz medium wave, as well as 94.9 megahertz FM. They also sometimes use 5980 kilohertz. Radio New Zealand has made some frequency changes. It now transmits on 13690 kilohertz between 0500 and 0900 UTC and between 0100 to 0500 UTC on 17675 kilohertz. Before, the hour between 5 and 6 was on 17675 kilohertz. That has moved now to 13690 kilohertz. Yemen on 11935 kilohertz was plagued by a very loud buzzing noise over the past few months. That noise disappeared over the last few weeks, but this past week another noise appeared. It's a pulsing noise. I picked up this pulsing noise on the 5th of September. It was back to normal on the 6th. Then on the 7th, the pulsing noise was there again. And on the 8th, it was back to normal again. This is what it sounds like. There are two new BBC frequencies that you can look out for. They have been heard over the past week or two. The one is 9895 kilohertz. It comes from Tashkent. And this goes out between 0 hundred and 0 200 UTC daily. It is beamed towards South Asia. Then also 13855 kilohertz between 1200 and 1300 UTC. This one also comes from Tashkent. Apparently this last one replaces a former frequency 9515 kilohertz. I received a second reception report from Liam in Colorado. Please feel free to send me your reception reports. It is always very interesting to hear what DXs are hearing in different parts of the world. You can send them to andre9 at duck.com. That is A-N-D-R-E and the number 9 at duck, D-U-C-K, dot com. Liam's reception report for the end of August and early September follows. On August the 28th at 1512 UTC, he heard Voice of Korea on 11710 kHz in English. Sinpo was 34343. On August the 28th at 1516 UTC, he heard NHK Radio Japan on 11815 kHz. Sinpo was 44444. On August the 28th at 1518 UTC, he heard TWR Africa on 11880 kHz in Somali from Manzini Eswatini. The SINPO was 34444. On August the 29th at 1810 UTC, he heard KBS World Radio on 15265 in Russian. The SINPO was 34444. On August the 29th at 1812 UTC, he heard BBC World Service on 15400 kHz in English from Ascension Island. The SINPO was 34443. On September the 3rd at 1240 UTC, he heard Radio Nikkei on 6055 kHz in Japanese from Chiba in Japan. The SINPO was 34443. On September the 5th at 1450 UTC, he heard Voice of America on 12080 kHz in Korean from Tinang in the Philippines. Sinpo was 45555. Liam says he also got his first reception of BPM, the Chinese time signal. On September the 3rd at 11.59 UTC, he heard the Chinese time signal Morse code on 10 MHz below the WWVH signal.
Before I end with the propagation forecast, a little bit of history. The rotating shortwave antenna at Nauen in Germany was put into service exactly 60 years ago. It was the world's first rotating shortwave antenna. The Nauen site was an important site during the Cold War. In 1959, it became the site for the DDR's international shortwave broadcasting station, Radio DDR, which broadcast under the name Radio Berlin International. Between 1959 and 1989, 21 powerful transmitters and 45 antenna systems were installed at Nauen. Between 1971 and 1981, three 500-kilowatt superpower shortwave transmitters were installed, feeding 23 high-gain curtain antennas positioned to broadcast to politically important countries. As the Eastern Bloc's second most powerful radio station after Radio Moscow, it became an important site as a dissemination channel of Cold War propaganda to both Western and other East Bloc countries. The rotating antenna was built in 1964 by two German companies. It was the first prototype rotating shortwave broadcast antenna in the world, and this one was used until the end of the Cold War. This antenna has been preserved as a historical structure. It consisted of a 70-meter tower supporting two reflective dipole arrays weighing 40 and 70 tons. The transmitter covered 5.8 to 18.8 megahertz and could be rotated a full 360 degrees. It could also be tilted in elevation from horizontal to 30 degrees to adjust to changing ionospheric sky wave propagation conditions. This ensured that the Radio Berlin International signal could be broadcast in the most efficient way all around the world. So to end, the HF propagation forecast as usual, based on the solar weather forecast from the NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center. i just like to mention here that space weather is very hard to predict beyond three days, so the information here is mostly a general overview of expectations, but these can change. Solar activity is expected to be at moderate levels over the coming week, except for Tuesday the 10th of September. A G1 to G2, which is a minor to moderate geomagnetic storm, is likely on 10 September due to the arrival of a coronal mass ejection event that left the sun on the 8th of September. The K index on 10 September is expected to rise to 6. There is a 55% chance of HF blackout conditions in some places on Tuesday the 10th of September. For the remainder of the week, the K-index is expected to be around 2. It is worth noting that the number of sunspots is at its highest level in 23 years at the moment. Along with the size and frequency of solar flares and coronal mass ejections, sunspot numbers indicate the progress of the sun's roughly 11-year solar cycle. The very high number of sunspots at the moment indicate that we have indeed entered the solar maximum when the sun is at its most active in this 11-year cycle. The solar maximum period can last up to two years, so we should certainly expect more strong geomagnetic storms over at least the next year, maybe even two years. These storms can cause HF radio blackouts at lower frequencies, but often very good propagation at higher frequencies, and of course also beautiful auroras at southern and northern latitudes far away from the poles where these auroras are normally seen. That's all for today then. Please send me your news items and reception reports so that I can share them here. If you would like to share reception reports, please tell me your location, the radio you used, and provide me with the SINPO or SIO codes for the signals you received. Happy listening.